Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Wellbeing Live, um, hosted by the Mental Health Center of Denver, and thanks to our presenting sponsor, Cigna. From across the organization um, on topics to help support your well-being and the well-being of people around you, um, we've brought Wellbeing Live together. Um, and my name is Amanda DeGruccio. I work for the Development Office at the Mental Health Center of Denver, and today we are excited to hear from Ryan Ray and um, Jevin Zun, who will talk about diabetes and healthy eating. If you have a question during the presentation, please submit it in the Q&A chat in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Um, and from here, I'm going to let Ryan and Jevin take it away. Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is gonna be our first well-being live presentation and my name is Ryan Ray. I'm a clinical pharmacist here at the Mental Health Center of Denver. I'm also a certified diabetes educator. Our topic today is going to be healthy eating and diabetes. And I have a fourth year pharmacy student with me that's going to be sharing some of the information and taking you guys on this trip with us as we explore carbohydrates within diabetes. I'm going to introduce Jevin. Thanks for the introduction, Ryan. Um, as you said, my name is Jevin, and uh, I'm currently a P4 student on rotation uh, here at the Mental Health Center of Denver with Ryan. Um, I do go to school at the CU Skag School of Pharmacy, and uh, we're very excited today for our presentation. So today's topic is going to be about carbohydrates uh, within diabetes. Um, we are focused upon the carbohydrate diet uh, because it is uh, extremely important um, aspect of diabetes self-management. Uh, however, these recommendations that we are going to be going over today um, really can be applied to anybody uh, who's interested in optimizing a healthy diet. So um, we wanted to make note that this is not specific to just uh, individuals with diabetes. So to begin with, what exactly is a carbohydrate? Uh, a carbohydrate is a nutritional category for sugars and molecules that your uh, body breaks down um, for energy and uh, its main purpose is to really provide energy for your body. Um, traditionally I think a lot of people think of carbohydrates as sugars or something that's sweet tasting. Uh, however this is not the case. Uh, carbohydrates can be broken down into three main categories as you can see here. Uh, sugars or also known as simple sugars, uh, starches which are complex sugars and then whole grains which are also uh, complex sugars. So um, let's briefly talk about what these labels really mean. So simple sugars uh, and complex sugars, they're labeled as such because of their molecular makeup. Uh, simple sugars revolve around single or double units and complex sugars revolve around large chains for their units. So examples of simple sugars that you may find in your house would be table sugar, milk sugars, uh, artificial sweeteners, sweeteners, and uh, fruit sugars. As for complex sugars, we're looking at starchy vegetables, whole grains, uh, and beans as examples. Uh, so these differences in their unit length uh, affect how these different carbohydrates can help your body, uh, mainly in their ability to output energy. So we'll begin to talk about these in the following slides. So why are carbohydrates important? Uh, why are we even really focusing on this? Um, carbohydrates are one of three macronutrients, the other being fats and proteins uh, that are essential to a healthy diet. Um, again, their main purpose is to provide energy. Uh, all these macronutrients fuel our body and uh, allow us to function and grow. So within the realm of diabetes, uh, carbohydrates are even more important because um, they function as the main macronutrient uh, affecting our blood sugar levels. So um, the combination of the amount of carbs you intake as well as your body's uh, ability to produce insulin uh, determines the blood sugar level of an individual and ultimately your blood sugar levels can have a great impact on how you feel. Um, so because of this, when we control carbs, um, it can lead to um, individuals feeling better and uh, avoiding further health complications that can arise um, with diabetes. So now that we've established that carbs are important, our next step is to find out which ones are better for us. So why are some carbs better uh, than others? Uh, I have this analogy here uh, through pictures. On the left is an image of um, logs burning and on the right, it's uh, newspaper burning. 
Um, and this kind of goes hand in hand with uh, digestive rates for carbohydrates. So when, we, when I mentioned simple sugars earlier, you know, your table sugars, milk sugars, sweeteners, things like that, um, this is, serves as quick fuel for the body, sort of like when you burn a newspaper. So it's fast onset, um, but you know, the fire doesn't last too long. So um, you'll feel the energy quick, but it's not gonna last you uh, very much during the day. Uh, when you compare that to complex sugars like starchy vegetables, for example, uh, these longer lasting carbs um, fuel your body for a longer duration. Uh, it just may take a little bit longer for it uh, to start burning, you know, like this, this log fire on the left. Um, next, we have processed sugars versus natural sugars. So obviously processed foods um, have many negatives with them. Um, first and foremost, they, they lack nutritional value. So there's this term tossed around called empty calories, where if, when we're looking at processed foods, a lot of times they have the same caloric value. Um, however, they, they lack all the nutri nutrients and um, vitamins, minerals that uh, natural sugars will give you. Um, in addition, they can be super dense uh, in sodium, uh, fats and oils, as well as preservatives and all those added things into um, into the processed foods aren't, aren't beneficial for your body. Um, lastly, uh, fiber content um, can go a long way in determining which carbs are, are best for your body. So um, fiber as, as just a, a nutrient um, can do a lot of things for you. Um, it can normalize your bowel movement, uh, lower your cholesterol, as well as help people to lose weight. Um, most importantly, I think for determining which carbs are better though, um, fiber content can actually increase your satiety. So uh, make you feel uh, fuller, um, longer, um, to where you know it sort of like stems your appetite a bit. Um, and in the case of diabetes, this can minimize your spikes in blood sugar after eating. So it's um, very beneficial for, for those carbs that have high fiber content. So um, after that brief introduction, I'll pass it over to Ryan and he's gonna further break down which car carbs are optimal within our carbohydrate diet. Thank you, Jevin. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of the carbs to minimize. There's so many carbs out there. What are carbs? Which are good carbs? What are bad carbs? Well, the carbs that we're going to want to minimize are foods that have added sugars. So these are going to be um, your sweets, your fruit drinks, your pastries, basically anything that tastes good or desserts. All of these are carbs that we're really going to want to minimize. These are the empty calorie type sugars that have been put in these. Um, anything with a processed carbohydrate, um, such as white bread, white rice, and most pasta, these are processed carbs that we're going to want to minimize and stay away from. Um, instead, we, we would rather prefer to see people lean more towards the healthier carbs, such as fruits, vegetables, whole grain products, if it is a grain product, um, such as whole grain bread, brown rice, and beans. Uh, those are good examples. So we're going to talk about the carbs to maximize now. Um, let's see. I got a list of about six or seven different categories that I really want people to focus on when, you know, if we have carbs in our diet, let's focus on these healthier ones. And I'll give you some reasons as to why these are the chosen and preferred carbs. Um, number one, dairy. Dairy is a carbohydrate. Um, it provides nutrients high in calcium and protein. Uh, some of you may be surprised to learn that dairy is a carbohydrate. Dairy is also a protein, and dairy is also a fat. Um, if you think about it, milk is actually one of our most perfect sources of food, right? That's what mommies give to their babies. It, it contains all the essential nutrients uh, needed to survive and live and grow. And so that's, that's a good one. We're going to want to look at dairy, so that all your milks cheeses, yogurts, these are good protein or uh, carbohydrates to include because they provide so much more than just the carbohydrates. Uh, beans are number two on the list of carbs we're going to want to maximize. And so when I say beans, I mean like kidney beans, black beans versus like green beans. Um, these are a little higher in carbohydrate compared with some of the other plant sources, you know, that would be in the same category. These are starchy carbohydrates. Um, the key here 
is that these kind of like milk also contain high protein but the other benefit to beans here is that they're high in fiber and Jeff and kind of touched on the, the benefits of the fiber in a diet for not only diabetics but for just people in general um, it's going to help keep you full longer um, it's kind of like have an extended release fullness it, it just prevents snacking in between meals uh, keeps your keeps your brain happy you know, you're, you're in a fed state you're happy you're not grouchy uh, you got energy to do what you need and the fiber is going to help prevent the blood sugar spikes <clears throat> uh, the third fruit or the third food that I have here on the category for carbohydrates that we'd like to maximize is going to be fruits and you can see a lot of fruits in the pictures here um, of course, all, all fruits contain natural sugars, and so we need to be aware not to overdo it here. Um, obviously, fruits are packed with beneficial vitamins, minerals, powerful antioxidants, but once again, the, one of the major benefits of eating fruit, fresh fruit is going to be the fiber, and that's usually contained in the skins and the, the cell structures of, of the, the fruit itself. Uh, number four for a beneficial carbohydrate is berries. So this is also in the fruit category, but berries are a little bit different. Um, they're considered a carb, of course, because of their sweetness and sugar. Um, berries have less comparable sugar than some of their other fruit counterparts. And so that's one benefit right there. Second, they're packed with tons of flavor, color, and sweetness, right? So. These are, berries are great to just have around individually, or you can add them to other foods to sweeten them and add flavor. Um, some good examples, you know, try some mixed, mixed berries, either fresh or frozen, throw them into some plain yogurt that's not been sweetened, and that's a good way to increase the sweetness and get some more nutritional value into that. Um, you can also throw frozen berries into a smoothie recipe, and that's a, another good way to increase the nutritional value and flavor and sweetness. Uh, the fifth one here on the list is going to be vegetables. You can go to town on vegetables all day. Um, all vegetables are going to contain some type of carbohydrate, but it's not what we consider significant. Um, it, it can be in certain vegetables, but they all have some uh, minimal amount of carbohydrate much smaller though compared to fruits and, and some of the other foods available. Um, the carbohydrates that are in the vegetables are there to store or to serve as the plants uh, stored energy. So they use carbohydrates much in the same way that we do. We use it for storing energy and, and burning for fuel. Um, feel free to fill your plates with vegetables um, you know fill half your plate with vegetables and use that to be your bulk and uh, filling you up part of your your dinner or any type of breakfast lunch dinner um, this is where you're gonna get your bulk and your, your uh, fiber from um, however you need to be careful try and stay away from the starchy vegetables those are gonna be higher in carbohydrates and these include the vegetables like potatoes corn and peas so we gotta be careful to watch those ones uh, you want to lower your, your limits on those ones a little bit another great category of carbohydrates to maximize is nuts walnuts almonds peanuts things like that these are great options for snacking um, they're not extremely high in, in carbohydrates but they are high in fiber and heart healthy fats. And so these are beneficial in more ways than one. Um, great to grab and go. Uh, they provide a ton of energy from the high fat content that's in them. They're, these are healthy fats, so it still doesn't mean just eat without discretion. You need to, you need to kind of be careful because they do have a lot of fat. It's a lot of calories from fat, but as far as a carbohydrate snack, this is a good choice if you're you're looking for things to have around the house. Um, the less carb that I want to mention to maximize is not. It's not a carb itself. It's it's a you'll see it. It's a group. Um, carbs are staples in our diets, and usually we have you know 50% of our calories in our diet come from carbohydrates. 
So if you if you do have a carbohydrate source on your plate, we want to make sure that it's a good or a good grain source of carbohydrate on your plate. We want to make sure that it's a good grain source. And so it, this would be like your bread, your rice, or your pastas as, as your grain product. And so we have the regular white product and then we have a whole grain product. And so we're gonna say, we wanna include whole grains into the, the category of carbs to maximize. And each grain product, like I said, has a usually has a whole grain counterpart. So white bread has whole wheat bread. Uh, brown rice has white rice as a counterpart. Uh, regular pasta has whole wheat pasta as a counterpart. And we just want to point out that these these two foods compared side by side, they have the same amount of carbohydrate. We're not we're not changing the amount of carbohydrates, but we are in in the brown or the whole wheat whole grain product. We're including all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that are on the outside of the grain of rice, and which is removed during part of the processing um, procedure. So we, we just want to make sure that everybody understands the difference of a white versus the whole wheat counterpart. They contain the same amount of carbs, but the brown whole wheat product is going to contain more of the beneficial vitamins, minerals, nutrients, fiber, the, you know, the things our bodies crave. So keep that in mind. And I'm going to move us on to the next slide here to give us a little more ideas of how much carbohydrate we need to start including in our diet and start quantifying carbs and, and getting an idea of how to incorporate this into meals. So carbohydrate serving sizes, what does that mean? Um, simply it means a single serving of carbohydrate is equivalent to 15 grams of carbohydrate. So when I say a carbohydrate serving, what I'm saying is whatever amount of that product, however much it takes to get 15 grams of carbohydrate. That's what it is. Um, it's not how much you put on your plate and that's one serving. It's just a way for us to say that's one serving of carb. So we know it's 15 grams. I have a list of items up on the screen here and they're broken down into starches, fruit, milk, sweets, and dessert. But if you take a look at the items on this list and compare the amounts of the food. I want everybody to kind of just glance over there and read through the list and, and notice the, the wide variety of sizes of servings here. Um, we look at one cup of melon or berries versus a half the cup of fruit juice versus four to six small crackers. Or you could have three cups of popcorn. That's quite a bit. That's pretty large compared to, uh, let's say, a tablespoon of jelly, right? And so you can see there's a wide variety of serving sizes here. But the one thing that's in common with all of these is that all of these have 15 grams of carbohydrate. And so we're going to call that one serving of carbohydrate. And so let's take this a little bit further. Um, Foods that are going to be highly concentrated in dense in sugar or with added sugar will be smaller amounts. For example, the jelly, you know, we notice that's only a tablespoon worth, but that tablespoon of jelly contains 15 grams of carbohydrates. Um, versus, let's take us back to, let's look at rice, for example. That's in the top right corner here. And so, one serving of rice, and that's cooked rice, not dry before it's cooked. It's, so one third cup of rice is equivalent to 15 grams. And so can anybody visualize in their head about how big a third of a cup is? Oh, that's, that's kind of an odd one to visualize. So we can use our fist as an example of, it's about equivalent to one measured cup. So if you could imagine a third of your fist, that's what we're talking about as one carbohydrate serving of rice. And so if we think about a third of this fist, that's not very big. I'm sure if I asked anybody in the audience watching this, you know, think about the last time you had rice on your plate for a meal. 
how much rice did you eat? And I'm sure it was more than a third of a cup. But we're not trying to say, you know, you can only have one serving of rice. You know, what you have on your plate is, is your serving, but how many servings of carbohydrates are there? That's what we're trying to figure out. And we know that one third cup of cooked rice is a serving. So simply we could just take anybody's plate, take a picture of it or actually measure it out or take an estimate using a fist or any other type of example we can come up with. And once we know about how much we have on our plate, then we can figure out how many servings of carbs do we have. And so, let's see, if we ate one full cup of rice, then we would be able to estimate that we had three servings of carbohydrates. And remember, one serving equals 15 grams. So we could easily say that we had 45 grams of carbohydrates just in the rice on our plate. And so where does where does that fall in our, our goals? Is that part of, you know, what are, what are our goal numbers per meal? What should I be looking at per day for carbohydrates? How much is too much? Well, let's move on to the next slide. And you'll notice I have a, a slide here with six different items. And I just wanted to throw this in as a visual representation to kind of help everybody see this. Can anybody think of what these items have in common? We have a glass of milk, that's a beverage. We have a piece of bread and a tortilla. Those are kind of similar. Got two cookies, that's like a dessert. Got a piece of fruit and an avocado. What the heck is in common with all of these items? I have no idea. Are they all sweet? No. Well, believe it or not, if we advance the slide one, all of these are one serving of carbohydrate, right? And so how, how do you know that? You, you wouldn't unless you had a resource or unless you've been learning, actively learning um, with a diabetic educator, or you've taken it upon yourself to look up these items. But really, you know, it's just, it's just practicing, making sure you're aware of what you're eating and being able to quantify and identify and break it down into appropriate servings. Um, just remember, carbohydrates come in many, many forms. Um, if you're confused right now, I don't blame you because it takes a little bit of practicing and, and trying to categorize items before you have this down and are comfortable in categorizing food. We're here all the time. I can offer one-on-one -on -one appointments and go over um, educational points like this with people who want to work on a healthier diet or learn how to carbohydrate count or anything for that matter just if you have questions come in call us um, we're happy to help um but one of the so if we're looking at these trying to identify these you know looking at their categories sweet foods those are always going to be pretty obvious to identify as being carbohydrates uh fruits that's obviously pretty easy to identify as well um looking at the bread and the tortilla i like to think of those those go into our grain, into our grains category. All grains are carbohydrates. And so the grains are corn, rice, wheat, barley, rye. There's several others, but you get the point. It's anything made from those products is gonna be you know, high in carbohydrates. And we don't typically use a lot of those products as you know, wheat itself. Typically we take wheat and we process it, grind it up and we make a flour out of it. And so, Anything that's made out of a flour or therefore a dough or a doughy substance is going to be classified as, as a carbohydrate. Dairy, that's always going to be a carb that has the milk sugars. Um, so your milk, cheese, yogurt, those are all going to be carbs. Vegetables, we talked about how all, all vegetables have carbs in it, but they vary widely with respect to the amount. Uh, starchy vegetables are going to be your higher end carbs and should be eaten more cautiously and less frequently than your non-starchy vegetables. We'll go over to the next slide here. And so now the question becomes, how much is enough? How much do I need to eat? Well, we know what carbs are. We know how to identify them and how to count them. It's just, can we put them all together and make sure that we're actually eating the required or suggested amount um our diets 
are typically way, way, way too high in carbohydrates. And so I would like to encourage, you know, the folks in the audience listening to kind of consider some of this. Um, we're going to include some cooking demonstrations and help give you guys tips and ideas on how to incorporate more variety of food and, you know, a lot more vegetables into the diet. Um, and Jevin's going to help kind of talk about that as we go on. But the only way to know if you're getting the right amount or the recommended amount is to, you're actually going to have to do some math and look at labels and, and put a little bit of work into it. Initially, this work may feel truly like work. Um, there's no way around that, but we're, we're kind of creatures of habit. We tend to eat the same foods over and over. We have preferences and situations that, you know, we, we just tend to fall into grooves that are over and over and over. So if you tend to eat a lot of sandwiches, I'm pretty sure you're not going to have to look up how many carbs are in a piece of bread every day for the rest of your life. I'm pretty certain that after one week, you would feel pretty confident that one piece of bread is usually around 15 grams. And so, like I said, this feels like work at first, trying to calculate this and add up carbohydrates and keep track of them. But really, your body, we, we learn, and it, it just becomes automatic after time. And after a couple weeks of looking up how many carbs are in a banana or an apple, you know, it, it just, it's something that's there. You always know it. And so using this over time just becomes part of your natural process, your natural routine, and you don't even think about it. Um, in general, we're going to want to keep our daily carbohydrate servings in check. That's, that's what we're looking in, at in diabetes. And not only for diabetics, but for everybody in general, you know, if we can really check ourselves before we sit down and eat a meal and kind of look at what we're eating, attempt to quantify it and at least our mind be able to say this is the right amount that's too much that's not enough we would all subconsciously without even think about it start changing our behaviors and, and kind of rectifying that but it's something you have to have an active process to know where you're at and know where you need to go from there um, so our goal yeah, is going to be to aim for three to five carbohydrate servings which are 15 grams of carbs per meal, and this includes your beverages. Um, don't forget about beverages when you're trying to quantify carbohydrates. There's so many hidden sugars in beverages that you just wouldn't even think of. So always you know, consider your beverages and, and include those uh, carbohydrates later. Um, so we're really, the goal here is not only to try and keep each meal within a certain amount of carbohydrates, but it's really about being consistent in that goal. Um, you know, if you can really adhere to a diet like this 80% of the time, that would probably make a huge difference. And you notice I didn't say 100% of the time, it's because we're all humans. Um, we all have bad days. We all have days where we're running late and planning just didn't come together. And so, you know, I, I usually aim for an 80%. Let's try and adhere to what this diet should be and the other 20% of the time we'll chalk it up as reward yourself for good behavior, put some room in there for some bad days or you just don't have the energy to, to deal with it that day. But the, the point is, is that in the grand scheme of things, we want you to be doing and paying attention to this and asking yourself these questions, you know, what, what do I have in front of me instead of just eating it and then trying to rely on what your body's telling you. Oh, I feel hungry. Oh, I need to go to the bathroom. We really want to make sure we're kind of monitoring and making sure we're giving our body the best that we can. Um, so there is a small difference in the recommendation between men and women is with respect to carbohydrates. I usually recommend um, a smaller amount for the women. And I would say, let's do, uh, three carbohydrate serving, you know, three to four carbohydrate servings per meal for women. And then I bump it up. So that's 45 grams per meal of carbohydrate for women. And then it, I, I add one more carb serving for males. And so I usually say four to five carb servings, which would be right around 60 grams of carbohydrate per meal. And so how, how do you do that? Well, basically 
like I said, sit in front of your meal before you eat it and try and see if you can identify all the carb sources in your meal. Um, you might have to have a sheet of paper to do so. Um, not only to, you know, if you have a lot of carbs, you're going to have a lot of a long list, but from there, I'm, I'm also going to ask you to look up, you know, what is the serving size of this carbohydrate? And so if, if we put pasta on our paper, we know from our previous example, our, I don't know if you saw it or not, but rice and pasta are about the same serving size, so a third of a cup per serving. And so you could say, okay, well, I have pasta written down. What's the serving size for pasta? Check your resource, a uh, third of a cup for 15 grams is one serving. And so I can write that down, and then I can look down at my plate that I actually served up, and I can see that I have well over a cup of pasta. So I know I have at least three servings of carbs. And if you follow the math at 15 grams per serving, that's at least 45 grams of carbohydrates there. And so in the grand scheme of thing, I'm recommending you know, between 45 and 60 grams total for that meal. So if you're calculating and you're not done adding all your, your parts yet, we need to think about it and say, okay, I got too many carbs here. What kind of substitutions can I make? I'm gonna have to eliminate this garlic bread because I, I have my I have my allotted carbs just in my spaghetti. And that's not even considering the sauce, which is uh, a big hidden reservoir for hidden carbohydrates. Always check the label on spaghetti sauces. If you don't believe me, go to your go to your refrigerator right now and look at how many carbohydrates are in ketchup. And that's just loaded with sugar. So lots of lots of hidden carbohydrates out there. All right, let's move on to the next page here. So in summary, we're just gonna give you kind of some carbohydrate diet tips. For most adults, you know, trying to break it down into three to five servings of carbohydrates per meal, have one to two carbohydrates allowable for a snack one time a day. And that's gonna put you in the goal, you know, of keeping your total daily dietary carbohydrates under 200 grams. Um, if you're not good with numbers and math, you really, really focus on being at least able to identify foods that are carbohydrates and that way you'll be able to sit down and say okay i got carb 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 uh oh that's all carbs i should probably move something and put some protein in there or you know mix it up throw some veggies in there have a salad um we just want to make sure that your meal is not all carbohydrates we got to get some variety um make sure we're feeding our, our bodies properly if your plate is heavy with carbohydrates like the spaghetti example and we still have a piece of garlic bread that we've already made and I know I'm gonna be over my limit I could easily just scrape some of that spaghetti back into the pot and now I have my half serving of spaghetti my garlic bread and when I look at that, I, I might say to myself, you know, I don't think that's going to make me full, but I've, I've already reached my maximum amount of carbs for this meal. And that's where it's important to consider having a side of vegetables, you know, mixed vegetables and a salad or, you know, there's tons of examples. If, if you can't think of examples to fill the other half of your plate, call me, come see me and, and we can put a plan together for you to help you out. But it's, it's very important that you know, we add other items to our diets that are non-carbohydrates. So it just makes us run better. We feel better. We think better. We operate better. We're in better moods. Um, a lot of emotional attachment with foods and, and moods. So there's a lot going on here. Um, look at nutrition labels often. This is a challenge to you folks. I know it sounds it's such a task and who wants to think about all that that sounds like a lot of work but honestly i don't like people to go too fast or to change routines up too quick and so i usually suggest just getting familiar with the wide range of variety of carbohydrates that are in products already um, start with what you have at home you know start going through the pantry and just compare two items grab two items and look at the carbohydrates and then think about it you know, is this product, would I have guessed that's a higher higher carb than this one? Or, you know, 
hey, I have a product in my hand and it has 37 grams of carbohydrates. Is that average? Is it high? Is it low? Well, you don't know until you start looking at a wide variety of products and, and knowing that, oh, this one only has seven grams of, of carbohydrates. That's a lot less than 37. Oh, here's something over here. This one has 55. That's way high. You're, you're not going to see things approaching 100 or over 100. And so getting an idea of how wide that range is and, and where do most common products fall is going to help give you an idea and then put that into perspective knowing that your meals should only contain 45 to 60 no more uh, grams of carbohydrate and that kind of helps put everything in perspective and, and see how everything's related to each other. Um, certainly there's many products that are available that don't come with a nutrition label, right? Um, walk through your produce section and show me a a nutrition label. They don't put them on zucchini or lettuce or carrots. And so what I'm trying to say here is you're going to have to have some kind of resource, whether it's an app that you download on a smartphone, whether you come in and visit me and I give you a handout that has, you know, common food items and their carbohydrates. Um, there's, there's tons of options for this. It's just hooking the individual up with what's going to work best for them. And so, you know, come ask us questions and we have health educators that are very versed in dietary um, modifications. We have health educate uh, physical fitness uh, trainers. Come ask us questions. We can, we can set up a diet that's appropriate for you um, with the common foods that you are using. Um, if you need any suggestions for getting a phone app, uh, for things that are good for tracking, monitoring, and calculating your carbohydrates, I would recommend apps like MyFitnessPal. Um, there's several that are on the market that seems to be one of the one of the trendier ones. There's a free version and there's a paid version. Um, I find that this app can be you can get too much information if you don't kind of turn down some of the options on it. But if you have any questions, ask us about those, and, and we can set you in the right direction. And I'm going to hand it back over to Jevin and he's going to take you on, a, on another journey here. So I uh, thought we would talk, touch a little bit about um, strategies for, for reading a nutrition label like Ryan had mentioned earlier. Um, really when we're looking at a nutrition label there's three major things we want to look at. Um, you can see the arrows there pointing to the um, amount of servings per container, the actual serving size for that food, and then also the total carbohydrates um, that are within that serving size. So for this example that we have up here on the screen, uh, we see our serving size is one and a half cups uh, with two servings within the container, and then each serving is a total of 46 total uh, carbs. So um, assuming we're eating the entire container of this food, uh, you've had two servings uh, instead of one, right? And so we want to multiply our grams of carbs uh, in our single serving by two to get the correct amount of carbs that you've eaten from the container. So 46 grams multiplied by two is 92 grams. Um, and that actually equates to six servings of carbs. So eating this entire um, container of food is, is quite a large sum of your, your daily uh, carbohydrate intake. So. Um, what we do want to also note is um, the serving size on these nutrition facts are not the same as our suggested serving size serving sizes for our carbohydrates. So um, the serving sizes that you see on nutrition facts um, are just like a suggested um, amount uh, by the manufacturers. Um, so if you're calculating your carbohydrate serving size, you're going to want to base it off of your total carbohydrate that you see listed there and divide that by 15. So nutrition labels obviously are a great tool to utilize in helping um, you know plan out a meal plan for managing your carbohydrate intake um, and we'll go a little bit further into that um, in the next slide. So here uh, we have a meal plan for um, just your average day. Um, we want to sort of give an example of this because a lot of times I feel like healthy meal planning has a stigma um, where you'll be eating a lot less and you'll be feeling hungry. 
Um, however, this isn't the case. As, as you see um, on this list here, um, it's pretty extensive on the amount of food that you're able to eat um, within you know, the allotments that we've been talking about for carbohydrates. Um, obviously, everything is a process and not all these recommendations have to be stringent lines like Ryan was saying. So, um, you know, if you're shooting for, you want to shoot for something that's feasible for you. So if, if 80% of the time you're, um, you know, managing your carbohydrate intake, then um, doing at least something is better than um, shooting for doing it all and then, and then failing at that, right? So um, within this basic meal plan, we want to look at the servings for each food within the meal. Um, obviously, we're, you know, looking for those foods that are high in fiber, lower in sodium, uh, lower in your fat calories and higher in your protein calories. Um, and um, yeah, so the, it's it's basically want to convey that it's, uh, it's achievable, it's attainable. So on the next slide, we'll see a visual representation of kind of what we um, had talked about for the your basic daily meal plan. Um, each one of these um, icons here is sort of equating to a single serving of your carbs. So if you're looking at uh, breakfast, for example, a bowl of cereal, we see two bowls there, um, is, is equated to two servings of carbs. Uh, whereas, um, say you're eating two slices of pizza there, um, there's four, four icons there equating to four uh, carbohydrate servings. So um, notice for dinner, uh, the chicken is sort of grayed out or not blued in anyway. Um, and that just means that, you know, that obviously meats and things like that um, are high in protein and the minimal in their, their carb value. So um, if you can sort of mix and match your foods, um, you know, meeting those um, minimums and maximums for your carb intake um, is, is, like I said before, very achievable, very attainable. So on the next slide, um, we want to talk about uh, means of optimizing healthy carbohydrate intake. And um, if you're like me, a lot of the times the food that the foods that you eat uh, don't necessarily revolve around certain meal times. It's um, snacks and you know grazing type of eating um, habits and things like that. So um, as far as maximizing um, your ability to manage your carbs uh, within snacks, um, substitutions can be really really helpful. So. Um, ultimately, we want to focus upon minimizing sugar, processed foods, and fats. Um, and as you can see in our table, um, many of these processed and refined foods are white in color, like we mentioned earlier in our presentation. So your potatoes, your white breads, your white rice, um, these foods are stripped of the nutrients um, that are contained um, in them naturally. Um, and so that's why we prefer these brown rices and whole grains. Um, Another example is uh, with juice. So a lot of juices that you get at the grocery store can have added sweeteners and syrups uh, that, you know, bolster the flavor and make them taste good. Um, and especially the juices that are from concentrate or have like a partial percentage of real fruit juice. Um, these sacrifice nutrition, vitamins, and nutrients um, when compared to just eating uh, the equivalent whole fruit. So um, now that you have some beneficial ways of managing your carbohydrate intake, let's move on to ways to um, implement these strategies at the grocery store. So a couple of grocery shopping tips for you guys. Um, obviously navigating grocery store can be sort of daunting uh, when you don't have a plan. Um, so first we want people to come prepared. Uh, we want people to plan menus, uh, make a grocery list ahead of time, um, and you know ultimately limit the amount of food that you don't need uh, to purchase. So. Um, first uh, suggestion is to shop the outside aisles of the grocery store first. Those are the aisles that contain your fresh fruit, fresh produce. Um, as well, again, we're re re reiterating this point, uh, read your nutrition labels. So we want to watch out for foods with extremely small serving sizes, um, foods that have high, high trans fats, high sodium, high sugars. Um, and obviously, um, when you're looking for these fresh foods, a lot of people um, have a point of contention of, man, these foods just don't last very long, right? They don't have a long shelf life. Um, I can't plan too far ahead because the food's gonna go bad. And so with that in mind, you can look for some items that um, are packaged um, so that they have a longer shelf life. Um, be careful for those that are packaged in oil. Um, so foods that are packaged in water can actually uh, be healthier in that regard. Um, as well, frozen and canned foods can also provide you with other options that, that will, you know, 
um, help you with the shelf life as well as be healthy for your body. Um, lastly, divide up your snacks into portions when you get home. So I know a lot of us, you know, if you're buying in bulk, things like that, we'll get the family size bag of chips. Um, and eating out of like a bag that large, it's, it's very easy for you to overeat that way, right? So um, if you're able to sort of divvy up those portion sizes for yourself, um, you know, after finishing a smaller bag of chips, you might feel full rather than having, you know, a large bag of chips that you can just keep eating out of. So ultimately, some of, uh, I hope some of these tips can help everyone optimize their uh, grocery store um, buys for healthy eating. Um, and uh, I'll pass the presentation back to Ryan and he can discuss how uh, you can follow these tips without sacrificing your budget. All right. Thank you, Jevin. So another signal is coming up here. Isn't healthy eating expensive? How am I going to afford this? No, it, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, eating healthy doesn't mean shopping at Whole Foods or Sprouts. Um, it's literally changing your mindset. Eating healthy is making sure we have the right portions of our macronutrients, fats, proteins, carbohydrates. Make sure we're getting a wide, wide variety of colors, uh, plenty of vegetables, uh, ample fruits. Just a, a, a nice, a nice healthy mix. Nice, nice healthy uh, here. I, forget, I don't know if we've mentioned yet or not, but we're going to be including a resource list at the end of the presentation that I would like all of you to check out. There's going to be, you know, a general overview of diabetes, nutrition label samples, um, sample recipes. Um, but what I wanted to talk about now is there's a, a resource on there. It's called Healthy Shopping on a Budget. And what it is, it's not a perfect situation or solution, but like I said, it's thinking outside of the box and understanding that it is achievable to shop at the dollar store and have a healthy, well-balanced, appropriate menu for a diabetic. And so we found a resource that has a one week menu, including a shopping list for all the items in that menu and it's you know Monday Monday through Sunday, uh, three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack. Um, the whole plan is made for diabetics, but like we've mentioned previously, that there is no such thing as a diabetic diet. Um, it's essentially eating healthy and correct. And so this meal plan is it would be appropriate for anybody, not just diabetics. Um, but really, the point we're trying to make is we want people to see that you can think outside of the box and maybe not have an ideal perfect breakfast, but you can still incorporate different items to get the proper nutrition required. Um, the list of all the, all the food items on the menu have a maximum of 45 grams of carbohydrates per meal, so it's appropriate for both male and female. All items were bought at the dollar store. And for the entire one week menu, if you bought all the items on there and followed it exactly, you would have obviously enough food for one week. It would feed two people and it would cost $33. And so now I, I ask you, how much food can you get if you go to Taco Bell or McDonald's? How much food can you get with $33? Not, not a ton. And would it last you a week? Definitely not. And would it be healthy for you? Definitely not. And so this is just a, an example I want everybody to check out. I'm not asking people to follow the menu and eat nothing else for one week entirely. Ideally, I would want everybody to at least look through it, read it, and see if there's anything on there that they could see themselves eating for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And if there's several things on there, you know, give it a try and give yourself a week of proper nutrition via thinking outside the box and see where it puts you. You know, you might have extra money in your pocket. You might feel better about yourself. You might have more energy. Um, there's a lot of a lot of benefits that can come out of that. So I, I challenge each of you to kind of to check out that resource and and see, like I said, if it's not ideal for you, what substitutions can you make that would make it more ideal for you? 
And if you can't think of anything, come see us and we'll, we'll help give you examples and, and help tie this into your situation. We'd be happy to help do that. All right, next slide here. Just some more overall grocery shopping tips. Um, we're gonna wanna utilize sales, ads, check the ads. This can seem like work, but give it a try. Use the local ads, go for online ads, etc. Plan your major meals around some of the foods that are gonna be on sale, you know, that given week. Um, download some of the apps that the grocery stores or wherever you're shopping from have. Um, a lot of them offer online discount coupons that are just electronic. And the benefit in that too, you can also put your grocery list in there and it keeps track of everything for you. Uh, so just another way to help stay organized. Um, try and stay and buy, buy foods that are in season, you know. Um, try and buy strawberries in the middle of winter. Obviously they weren't grown here, so they had to be brought in from somewhere else. So that comes with, you know, a higher price tag. It's, it's going to be more expensive if you're buying ingredients that are out of season. Uh, Jevin kind of already hit on this a little bit, but avoid prepackaging. Um, prepackaged foods if you can buy something in bulk uh, you know if you buy a big package of chicken wings and you get home and you can put four chicken wings in a bag and you end up with 10 bags you can you know you can freeze those individually and take them out as you can eat them and that that one product that you bought now stretches much further and you'll be in a better situation if planning is not available and you don't know what to do in a last minute situation, you'll have a lot of pre-packaged meals. Um, avoid the hunger. Who has gone grocery shopping hungry before and then got home and said, what the heck did I buy? Because we all have, I'm, I'm pretty certain. The secret here, you know, if you go to the store hungry before you've eaten, every single bad item is gonna just look so appetizing you're gonna to wanna to grab it, put it in the cart for later. And so a better strategy, go to the grocery store after you've had your meal. Uh, your, your cravings are already satisfied. You're more willing to stick to your pre-made shopping list and you're not gonna be spending extra money on unnecessary items. Um, like I said, another one is watch your meat. Meat is usually one of the most expensive items in the store, you know, the proteins. You know, check your sale, uh, buy meat when it's on sale, buy it in bigger packaging, break it down on your own when you get home. Those are some good ideas to help save and shop for, for diabetes and food in general. On the next slide, this one's really important to me. Um, this is getting to know your seasonings and your spices. And just because we have limited uh, variety of, of foods that we can make or access to things doesn't mean that we have to have the same flavors and same menu items day after day or week after week. There's a lot of, a lot of strategies and a lot of different ways to, to switch up and add variety into the foods that we're making, even if we get the same basic staples over and over and over. Um, so healthy eating doesn't have to sacrifice flavor. That's the point I want to make. Um, we can substitute and use healthy fats instead of butter for frying or sauteing. Um, I don't know, there's, you know, if you've ever walked down the spice aisle, it can be, if you don't know what you're buying or if you don't know what it tastes like and you haven't experimented or you're not real versed with other cultural, culture uh, flavors, it, it's a little intimidating, but you know, I, I invite all of you to, to branch out and explore the taste buds on your tongue because there's there may be stuff out there that you've never even considered and it's, it could be your spice of life you know who knows um we we tend to recommend avoiding salt um as a seasoning salt too much salt i wouldn't i wouldn't add salt to anything we have so much salt in all of our products already that we're buying that's why we're encouraging them to go more fresh and frozen um but if we do have to season something and you're not sure what flavors go with what, a good option might be trying, uh, has anybody heard of the Mrs. Dash seasonings? 
basically what they are is they're they came out as a salt substitute and so these are products that are full of natural herbs and spices and no salt whatsoever and so these i think right now they have 12 different varieties of flavors that are out there uh things like italian herb and spice um tomato basil garlic they have a spicy mix they have lemon pepper they have an original table blend basically what i'm trying to say is you know if you had a bunch of chicken uh chicken wings for example i now have six or seven varieties of of chicken wings that i can cook and all i've done is change the spices so stock make sure you, you guys you know stock up on your spices and are familiar or experimenting or are at least familiar with the advantages of using all the different spices that are available um i would suggest maximizing the flavor obviously from herbs and spices before using sugar or salt um my preference would be to to skip adding any salt to any food but if you are going to use some use a sea salt or like a himalayan salt that has you know the beneficial natural vitamins and minerals um some some recommendations for fresh herbs um some you know there's obviously tons of dry but fresh is available as well uh you can eat those and it doesn't affect diabetes at all um garlic is a great one has lots of anti-inflammatory properties it's high in manganese b6 uh vitamin c selenium uh things like basil basil is so aromatic and fragrant it really brings out a lot and a lot of a lot of tones and a lot of the foods um that's also rich in vitamin k manganese and copper some essential vitamins here uh things like cumin using cumin is good um not only does it taste good but it helps the body with the immunity and, and digestion um ginger that's another one of my favorite spices or herbs um has has a lot of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties um so you know i challenge you to get familiar with your spices and see what you can come up with and we're going to take us to our next slide because i want to want to kind of draw all this together and I would like to put together a cooking demonstration. Um far too often I I hear a lot of excuses from people that first of all, we don't not enough people are eating enough vegetables. We know that. I know that. Um I'm sure you would agree. But what do we do about that? What can we do about that? I hear excuses all the time that they don't know how to cook or they don't like vegetables or maybe they don't have teeth and they don't have the ability to chew and so we've we've thought of all these things and we've come up with three different cooking methods for three different recipes using one basic staple item and so this just highlights the variety that you can create with a, one single ingredient different methods to create different textures different flavors different seasonings and so We're going to let Jevon show us three different ways to prepare foods and you know think about different ways that you can incorporate these different cooking methods with similar ingredients and a variety of spices to just expand your your possibilities of the food that you're putting in your mouth. One thing is certain, we need to eat every day and you might as well be the one in charge of that putting good food in your mouth and the best way to do that is controlling what you're buying, what you're cooking and how much you're putting on your plate. Uh so without further ado, Jevin's going to show us some cooking demos. Everyone, my name is Jevin and today we're going to be doing three different recipes. um all utilizing the key as the main ingredient. So um the main thing is just to show the versatility of a single ingredient. Uh obviously zucchini as we all know is a good healthy carbohydrate option uh for uh especially for a diabetic diet. So uh let's get started. Our first recipe today is going to be a baked parmesan zucchini and uh we'll get right into it. So first just while we're prepping uh we need to preheat the oven to 350 degrees 
having the zucchini, we just want to kind of sort of take both ends off, like so. Um, and we're going to sort of section off into thirds here. So there, right there. And then each of these, like, thirds is going to slice down into, um, I'll say, like, maybe eight pieces like this. So just keep half in it, right? All right, so now we're just going to lay all these pieces out for separated onto your pan. All right, so once you have it onto the pan, um, these are our seasonings today. We have olive oil, salt, black pepper. Uh, I made this sort of concoction of dried herbs, um, basil, oregano, and thyme. So obviously if we had fresh herbs, fresh herbs might be preferable, but dried herbs work just as well. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Parmesan cheese. So uh, first I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil over them. Uh, you can put as much or as little as you want, uh, just enough to sort of coat it and give it a nice sort of um, golden, golden brown, you know, when it comes out of the oven. I'm going to go at it with the pepper. And for these, um, I mean, you could definitely measure out the seasonings and stuff like that based off the recipe if you'd like to. Um, otherwise, I kind of just like to eyeball it a little bit. Obviously, with the salt, I'm trying not to go too hard on it because uh, we want the other flavors to not be too masked. All right, and then after that, you just kind of toss them. So really get the vegetables to suck up all of that good oil and good herb, salt, pepper flavor. So lastly, we're just going to top it off with some Parmesan cheese. All right, just like so. And then this guy will go into the oven. All right, so we're going to stick this guy into the oven. We're going to do it for 15 minutes. Set our timer here. Fifteen minutes. All right. So we're gonna take a look at what we have here. You already smell the aroma of the dried herbs. Um, and just to sort of get a little crispy, a little golden brown, we're gonna broil it for a couple of minutes here. So our zucchini has been broiling for about two, three minutes now. We can probably take a look. Perfect. You can tell the Parmesan cheese is getting a little golden brown. That's more awesome. A big Parmesan zucchini. So for recipe number two, we're going to be doing a shaved squash salad with tomato. So as you see here, we have two different types of squash. Again, the zucchini that we've been using and then yellow squash as well, just for, you know, different texture, different color. Um, again, we're going to take both ends off. And for shaving these squash, we're going to be halving these guys right down the middle. Okay. And then we're going to be taking our grater here into our bowl. You just going to want to kind of push it down along the grater. Like so. Okay. Next, we're going to be going at it with the yellow squash. And the same thing. The next step in our salad is going to be halving our tomatoes. So we just have grape tomatoes here, and all we're doing is just cutting them in half like so. So once you got enough cut up, these are all going to go into the bowl with your raisin squash. So now that we got our veggies in the bowl, we're going to season them a little bit with salt. And then a bit of olive oil. And just mix that up. 
So now that we have our salad ingredients prepped, we're gonna start working on the dressing. So we're gonna have like a lemon base for it. I'm gonna start rolling this guy to just see the, the juices flowing out of there a bit. Um, first thing we're gonna do actually is gonna slice the side of it because we're gonna to wanna to get a little bit of lemon zest first. So just a little lemon peel if you want to. Slice it up nicely here, just like so. In strips. So lemon zest, get that under the knife and into the bowl. Next we'll get our lemon juice going. Just slice it in half. Obviously there's seeds inside the lemon, so if there's any just poking out right there, try to get that out. Otherwise, when you're juicing the lemon, Try to let that sit through your fingers, and then you'll catch whatever seeds may come out, and then the juice will go in there nicely. All right, next we're going to put a little bit of sugar in there. Some sweetness. Some olive oil. Then our dried herbs. And then salt. That's all going to get mixed up together to make our dressing. Once the dressing is made, what you have to do is just drizzle it on the salad. So our third and final recipe is going to be a cream of zucchini soup. Uh, pretty simple ingredients. Uh, you're really just looking at chicken broth. I have some reduced sodium chicken broth here today. Uh, obviously your zucchinis and then a small onion. So I'm just going to cut this up into smaller pieces. It doesn't really matter too much um, what it looks like because these are eventually going to get pureed. And then your zucchini, again you take off the ends, and these you can just kind of slice at the chunks like so. So once you get everything chopped up, open up your chicken broth, this is going to go into your pot. Um, I've already been, already have this preheated anyway. And then in go your onions and your zucchini. And we're pretty much going to cook these until it gets soft. Um, you want it on high heat first to bring it to a boil, and once it gets to a boil, you can lower it and keep it on a simmer for about 20 minutes covered. All right, so our soup has been simmering for 20 minutes now. You can see all the vegetables in there have softened up. Um, so ideally, if you have an immersion blender, this will work the best. Um, so obviously, you can just put it in there. Um, and blend it up in the pot. I unfortunately don't, so today we're going to be using a Nutribullet, uh, or you can really use any sort of blender um, that you just have at home. So once we got it in there, we're just going to blend it up and uh, mix it all together. Pour our soup back into our pot, and now you can really smell the aromas of the onion and the zucchini. Um, the rest of it is just uh, seasoning. So uh, I'm going to put a little bit of garlic powder in there. I'm going to put some salt and pepper. And this is really just to taste. Um, obviously, go easy a little bit on the salt because it's really not too vital for the taste of the recipe. And pepper. Um, I'm also going to toss in some cayenne pepper, so I just like some extra kick. And then a little bit of Parmesan cheese flakes, just sort of melt in there and thicken up the soup. And then if you have heavy whipping cream or sour cream or something like that, that'll also be good to sort of 
um, thicken up your soup a little bit. Um, today, I'm just going to be using some milk. Go with the milk. And then just mix all of that up. And there you have it. Three zucchini recipes. Uh, we have our baked Parmesan zucchini, our cream of zucchini soup, and then our sliced squash salad with tomato. Thanks for watching. Hello all, um, thank you for joining us today. Um, unfortunately, due to time, we're going to wrap up here. Um, we will be posting the questions and answers to the Wellbeing Live webpage, as well as the resources, which you might have also posted in the Q&A. Um, so thank you for coming today and attending the Wellbeing Live. Thank you to Ryan and Jevin for being with us and sharing that valuable information and those great recipes. I'm certainly very hungry now. Um, and we hope to see you next week. And um, if you're interested in learning about more, um, there is a form on our Wellbeing Live webpage and you can um, get notified if you fill out that form on when our next event is. And you can also ask questions and give us advice on maybe what you want to see next. So that is it. And thank you for being here today.